Yeah, so go ahead and come onto your back. And we'll begin with the knees bent, feet on the floor. The feet can be a little bit wider than the hips. And for these first couple of breaths, let your knees drop into one another. So the inner knees come to touch. And then rest your hands somewhere on your body. So it might make sense to have one on your belly, one on your chest, or both on the belly. And close your eyes and literally just let your body melt. Let your body soften into your mat. Begin to notice your breath and feel your breath, especially if the hands are resting on the chest and the belly. Feel how the chest and the belly move as you breathe. And just take a couple more breaths here. Really let the body begin to soften. So the back of your sacrum your shoulders, the back of your head, let those all be heavy. And soften your eyes and your mouth, and your forehead. And stay generally in the shape. Then release the hands down to the earth now. Uh, and then point the knees straight up to the sky. Keep your feet on the floor. We'll just sway the legs slowly. So begin to sway both knees to one side. And then come back through center. Exhale, let the knees release to the second side. Uh, use your in-breath to point the knees to the sky. Knees travel back over to the first side as you exhale. Now do this a couple more times. Take it with your breath, take it nice and slow. Really feel the subtle rotation in your spine that's beginning to open, a little bit of opening, the outer hips, the inner groin as you move your knees from side to side. Uh, and then the next time that you get to that first side, whatever that first side is for you, it doesn't matter which side, pause there. And you can simply stay like this, let your body be heavy, or hmm, whatever leg is towards the side, so if you're to the right side, go ahead and put the right foot over the left knee. So it'll be the opposite if your knees are to the opposite side. You're just adding the foot to the knee for a little bit more pressure. Yeah, that's it. I'm watching you guys all got that. Welcome, McKay. I'm gonna go ahead and release that. If you have the foot to the knee, go ahead and release both feet to the floor, sway your knees to the second side. And either just rest there, or if you're moving to the left, place the left foot over the outer right knee. Uh, breathe. And then come back to center, both feet on the floor, knees to the sky. Yeah, and if the feet are as wide as the mat, you'll need to walk them in a little bit so the feet become more hip width apart. Let's start with the hands on the ground. And as you take your next breath in, push your feet into the ground, lift your hips, lift your spine up to the sky for a bridge. Yeah. And then as you exhale, roll back down, upper, middle, and sacrum resting on the earth. And we'll just move through that a couple times. Inhale, lift the pelvis, lift your spine, lift your chest, and let it all release as you exhale. Yeah, a couple more times. And take it with your own breath. See if you can keep your face and your eyes and your forehead soft the whole time that you find this movement. Right, and just let it start to unfold. So that first round, it might have felt a little bit stiff. And with each subsequent round, it might feel like you can get the hips a little higher and broaden through the front of the chest a little bit more. Mm 
And we'll just take it one more time, lifting. And then lower back onto the earth. And then draw your knees into the chest. So knees and thighs into the chest. Have your hands on your shins. And then you can just pause in stillness or take a couple breaths to find a little bit of movement. It can be a little rock from side to side. It can also be little circles with your knees. And then we'll rest and center, keep the thighs into the chest. Yeah, let's lift the head and the shoulders and the nose up towards your knees. So everything is curling into a tight ball. And then as you take your next breath in, we'll reach the arms and the legs long, lower the head to the earth. Keep the arms and legs hovering above the earth unless you want a simpler version, which hands and feet on the ground. And then as you exhale, pull yourself back into that tight ball, bend your knees, pull the thighs in. Inhale, lengthen your legs and your arms, let them hover unless you're modifying, head down. And pull it back in. Now we'll do that a couple times. Inhale, reach long. And exhale, draw your body into a tight ball. Three more times, breathing as you move. Inhale long. And exhale, roll it up. Hi, Doris, nice to see you. A couple more times, reach, breathe in. Breathe out, curl up. Yeah, one last time to reach long. And then pull it in, pull the whole body tight. And then lower the shoulders, lower your head to the earth. We'll lower the left foot to the earth, cross your right ankle over the left thigh. So it looks like you're gonna start to come into pigeon on the back, but we'll keep the left foot on the floor. Draw your left hand behind your head for support. Reach your right arm to the outside of the right thigh. Inhale. And then as you exhale, we'll lift the torso off the earth and twist left elbow towards the right leg. Ah, bring yourself back to center, but keep the shoulder blades floating as you take a breath in. Exhale, lift again and twist to the right. That's gonna be our basic movement. We'll come back to center each time we inhale and lift and twist a little bit more with the exhale. Yeah, we'll take it four more rounds like this and we'll add on to it after that. Every time you exhale, pull the belly down as you lift and twist, yes. A couple more times. Yeah, let's do it twice more and then we'll pause in that lifting and twisting position. Good. So the next time that you're lifting and twisting to the right, pause at your high point and then we're going to lift and twist even more and just pulse the body up. So yeah, each exhale, just a tiny little movement, lifting more of the rib cage away from the earth, so the back of the rib cage, pulsing and twisting, just three more rounds. Yeah, last round. And then release, release the shoulders, release the head, release your right foot to the earth. And right away, we'll swap, left ankle crossing over the right thigh. The right hand will come to support the head, the left hand will reach away. Inhale, and then find your lift and your twist as you breathe out. Yeah, so same thing as before, we'll take about eight rounds, lowering with the breath in, lifting with the breath out. Yeah, and it's a common tendency to, mm, to kind of shy away from the intensity of it by rolling onto the left shoulder here. See if you can really let the left shoulder lift off the earth every time that you twist. Ah, and that'll require engaging through the center of your body a little bit more. Let's take three more rounds. Belly pulls down as you exhale and lift. Bring yourself back to center as you inhale. Ah, last time. And then pause in that lifted position. So left hand is outside the left thigh. And then begin to pulse, lift more of the rib cage off the earth. Spread and reach through that left finger. Yes. Yeah. 
just four more times, lifting and twisting, feeling into that intensity. And go ahead and release, release the shoulders, release your head, release the left foot to the earth. Yeah, and then draw both knees into your chest and send both legs straight up to the side. So legs over the hips, the knees can be bent or straight. And just take a moment to move your feet around, move your toes and your ankles. So you can circle the joints, you can point and tuck, flex the feet, just find a little bit of movement into the feet. And then we'll find our Barbie feet. Um, I wish I had a better name for that, but I don't. So we'll reach through the ball of the foot. So the ball of each foot is reaching towards the sky. Spread your toes really, really wide and then pull just the toes back towards your shins. Hands on the earth, palms down. Take a breath in. And as you exhale, starting with the right leg, we'll really slowly lower the right leg any amount towards the earth. Yeah, keep the leg strong, slowly inhale, and return the right knee and the right leg over the head. Good, left leg lowers, exhale. Support it by exhale, drawing the belly down. And lift back up, inhale. Yeah, so that's our movement. We'll move from side to side. Each time you exhale, lower one leg at a time. You get to choose how far you go with it. Yeah, and if it feels easy, slow it down even more. Yeah, slow it down. And smooth out your breath. And so, yeah, some of you are doing it with knees bent. Feel free to keep the knees bent. If the hamstrings are restricting, knees can definitely be bent. They can even be bent at a 90 degree angle. Uh, we'll just take it two more times to either side. See if you can slow it down like 50% for those last two rounds. So you really feel into it. Nice. Yeah. And you're really eliminating all of the momentum. It's all coming from your core, from your center. Casey, I'm going to call you out. Slow it down. <laughs> Last full round. When you're done with that round, take your time. There's no rush, but when you're done, squeeze your knees into your chest. Yeah. And then start to rock yourself forward and back on your mat. So it's a sweet little massage of the spine. If you're on a hard surface and it doesn't feel great, feel free to do something different. Uh, and see if you can gather enough momentum to lift all the way or step all the way onto your feet and come to your rug. Of course, if that transition doesn't work, slide on to one side and find your way to the standing forward fold. Ah, and take your time getting there. We'll spend some time in ragdoll. Once you're there though, feet are about hip width apart, the knees have a generous bend, and the elbows can grab, or the hands can grab opposite elbows, or the hands can come behind the head for an interlace, and that'll just be a little bit more of a neck release. Ah, and really invite the upper body and your head to soften. And then add on any movement, add on any swaying or bouncing. You might even bend one knee a bit more and straighten through the opposite. So just feel into it and move so you get something out of it. And ideally we're looking for some spinal release here. We're looking for this inversion, this very first inversion that we're taking just to give some spaciousness between your vertebrae. And take about three more breaths. Really give yourself a chance to unwind, to soften, to decompress. And we'll release the hands. 
Uh, <clears throat> and as you take your next breath in, walk your fingers up your shins. So just below your knees, we'll take a half lift. Lengthen your spine, reach the crown of the head forward as your sit bones reach back. And then exhale, refold chest to thighs, top of the head towards the earth. Do that a couple times. Take your breath in, hands walk up, spine lengthens. And let that go. Exhale, forward fold. One last time, take your breath in, lift up halfway. Yeah, and then this time as you exhale, let's bend the knees, bring the fingertips to the floor and step the right foot back, lower your right knee to the earth. Yep, and with the right knee to the earth, point the toes back and then we'll just bend and straighten that front leg a couple times. Yeah, and know that you can always add something underneath the hands if the hands don't easily reach the ground here. We'll just kind of straighten the left leg a couple times, warming the hamstrings, and the hip flexors, the legs in general. Yeah, and then we'll rest with the left knee bent. I say rest, it might not feel like rest in your body, but rest with the left knee bent. The hands can stay on the floor or they can walk up to the front thigh. Or another variation, take the hands and interlace them behind the head and reach your elbows sky. Ah, so low lunge, any variation with the hands. Same thing with the lower legs and the, low, the lower body of the legs. So really, really ground your feet into the earth and push into the top of that back foot. Ah, and the more you push into the top of the back foot, the lighter you'll be able to be on that back knee, your right knee. Long, smooth breaths. And then let's straighten the arms, reach the arms up to the sky, deep breath in. Yeah, and as we exhale, let's take a twist. Right elbow across to the left thigh, make a ball out of the bottom hand, cup over it with the top, and use that to torque or torque or twist the body towards the left. Yeah, alternatives, right hand on the ground, left arm up to the sky. Yeah, continue to push into the feet, but lower the pelvis. Rotate the torso. Big breath in. And then we'll release the twist. We'll come to our half moon, and uh, not half moon, sorry, half split. Straighten out the front leg. Yeah, slide the left heel forward a little bit. Great chance to take hold of your blocks or book or quiz in our Casey. Yeah, and then melt your chest and your head towards your extended leg. Yeah, and imagine that that left heel, that you could really drive it into the ground. It's really anchor it into the ground and then pull the left hip crease back. Yes. Yeah, and you can do that physically with your thumb or you can do it muscularly using yeah, your internal muscles. There it is. Yeah, and then let's re-bend the left leg. Come up onto the the ball of the back foot, so lift your knee off the ground. And we'll take a breath in to step forward, lifting the spine. And then a breath out to forward fold, releasing your head completely. Halfway lift, inhale, fingers on the shins or fingers on the floor. Release and fold as you exhale. Halfway lift, breathe in. And forward fold. Now, uh, last time, take your halfway lift. And then exhale this time, left foot back. Lower your left knee to the earth. Fingers stay on the earth or they take your blocks and bend and straighten through that right leg. Now, one more time, bending, straightening, and then we'll rest with the knee bent. And then again on the side. Choose to have your hands resting on the ground or choose to walk them up to the front thigh or find that interlace behind the head. Yeah, feet and legs are strong. The pelvis is heavy. If you have the interlace, lift your elbows up towards the sky 
and use your hands on the head to traction the spine higher. So just like we were in ragdoll, if you had the hands behind the head, you were lengthening the head towards the earth. Here you're lifting and finding some decompression, working against gravity. Nice, we'll reach the arms up to the sky, take a deep breath in, and then find your twist, left elbow to the right thigh, or the left hand down to the floor and the right arm up to the sky. Yeah. And use your breath, so every time you exhale in a twist, see if you can rotate the torso a little bit more towards the right, rotating through your spine. And then release the hands back to surround the front foot. We'll straighten out the front leg for your half splits, Ardha Hanuman half splits. Yeah, and for most of our bodies to keep the hips over that back knee, it makes sense to slide the right heel forward. Yeah, just a couple of inches. Yeah, there it is. And then pull the right toes back towards the shin, flex your foot. Once again, anchor the front heel into the earth as you drag that hip back. So keeping the hips square to one another. And then we'll rebend the front leg, look forward, lift the back knee off the earth, inhale, step forward with a flat back. And then refold, exhale, crown of the head towards the earth. Yeah, and then we'll rise. We'll rise all the way up to stand. Circle the arms, reach the fingers up. And hands to the heart. Take a deep full breath in. And out. And we'll take some sun salutations, release the hands down by the side, use your breath in to circle and reach the arms up. And as you exhale, we'll fold, fold at the hips, knees can be bent or straight, inhale to your half lift. And exhale, bend your knees, ground your palms, step one foot and then the second foot back to plank. Lower your knees, bend your elbows, lower your belly, chest and head. Point your toes back. Inhale, cobra pose. And then exhale, downward facing dog. Yeah, and it's our first time we're facing dogs, so we'll linger a little bit. If it feels good to bring in any movement, feel free to. Maybe bending one knee at a time or both knees at the same time. Also be finding some movement in your neck, in your head, and your jaw. Next time you take a breath in, let's lift the heels high, rocking onto the balls of the feet. Exhale, bend your knees, keep the spine long, look forward. And then step one foot and the second foot forward to the front of your mat. Halfway lift, inhale. And release to fold, exhale. Rise to stand, stand grounded through your feet, arms reach up. And hands to the heart. Uh, second round, inhale, reach up, and fold forward, exhale, lift the spine, reach the head forward, and then bend your knees, plant the hands, step back to your plank, uh, and choose your vinyasa, so you can lower the knees and the chest, or you can lower halfway down for chaturanga, you choose your cobra or your up dog, up dog, just the palms and the tops of the feet push down. And downward facing dog, hips to the sky. And we'll stay three breaths again. Stay strong and connected through your arms. Yeah. And use your hands, use your knuckles, use your fingertips. To distribute the weight so it's not all jamming into your wrist. Next time you take a breath in, we'll float the heels up. 
And exhale, bend your knees, look forward. Step your feet or some of you will hop your feet to the front of the mat. And halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Forward fold, Uttanasana. Ah, inhale, rise all the way up, reach through the arms, spread through the fingers. And hands to heart, exhale. Ah, inhale, reach up. And dive forward, exhale. Find your lift as you breathe in. And travel back, step back or hop back, chaturanga. Yeah, find your back bend, whether it's a cobra or an up dog. And then we'll meet back in a downward facing dog. Once again, pausing there for a moment. All right, from your downward facing dog, let's lift the right leg up and back behind you. And as you exhale, we'll step or help the right foot to arrive between the hands. And then use your breath in, lift your body up, reach the torso, reach the arms up to a high lunge. We'll exhale here, settle the pelvis down. Take a breath in to reach up through the hands, maybe shift the gaze towards the sky. And then let that go, forward fold, exhale, hands to the earth. And we'll take our slow step back. Use your breath in to step the right foot back to meet the left. And as you exhale, lower and inhale, back bend, vinyasa, downward facing dog, exhale. We'll do the second side, left leg rises. You can always modify the pace. Exhale, step that left foot between your hands. Establish balance on your feet first, and then inhale, rise up. Settle in, exhale. Strong back leg, reach up, take a breath in. And let it go, hands down first. Use your inhale to come to plank. Yeah, and then exhale lower, or you can always lift straight back to your downward facing dog and pause. And just to do it again, when you're ready, right leg rises with the breath in. The exhale pushes the air out as you step that foot through or help that foot through. Yeah, rise up, inhale. Stay where you are, exhale. Strong back leg, lift and reach. And release, palms down. Plank pose. Ah, take a breath to yourself, move through your vinyasa or choose to rest. Left side when you're ready, start by lifting the left leg high and then pull the thigh to the chest, step the foot through, exhale. Let the inhale carry you up, fill up with air as you lift and settle in. Strong back leg, lots of reach as you take a breath in. And forward fold, palms down. Yeah, decide how, we'll step back first and then decide how you transition back to your downward facing dog. And then we'll move through that one more time. I'll let you do it on your own. Of course, if you're done with it, you're like, oh, just pause, take a rest, pause and down dog or child's pose or do some cat cows. Otherwise you're on your own for a round. Play with slowing the breath. And just feeling into the movement on your own. Yeah, and there's no rush, take your time. Pause in your downward facing dog when you're done with that round, left side. Ah, 
Uh, if you're still moving, take your time. If you're in your downward facing dog, slide the body forward to a plank pose and then turn it into a forearm plank. Lower one elbow and palm at a time. Let the elbows come right underneath your shoulders and the palms can either come to the earth or the palms can interlace, the fingers can interlace. And options with your legs, the knees can stay lifted for more challenge or the knees can always lower for less intensity. Yeah, and we're just gonna stay and breathe in your forearm plank. Notice if your shoulder blades are sliding towards each other and see if you can actively reverse that. Broaden the upper back, push into your elbows and your palms and separate the shoulders. Yeah, and then remember that your legs, we have some of the biggest muscles in our body in the legs. Let your legs work. Squeeze your legs together and then lift your inner thighs towards the sky above you. Take one more deep, full breath in. Yeah, and then everyone exhale, knees down, pelvis down. Keep the elbows where they are and let the palms come to the earth if the hands were interlaced and come into your sphinx pose. So really actively for sphinx pose, push your palms into the ground and the elbows into the ground. Let the chest shine forward. Yeah. And then add a really subtle but important tuck of the low belly in and up. So instead of kind of collapsing here, push the arms down, lift the chest forward, and then lift the low belly up a little bit. Three big breaths. Yeah, and become aware of tension or tightness starts to travel up to your face or your eyes. Let that soften. Keep the work into your arms. Soften through your face. One last breath in. And then as you exhale, lower the whole front of the body to the earth. Rest your forehead on the earth and we'll bend the knees and just sway the legs from side to side. Sway the feet from left to right. Hmm. Straighten out the legs again. Slide the hands back and let's come back to our downward facing dog. And from your down dog, reach the right leg up and back behind you, and we'll bend the right knee, open up the hip, stack the right hip over the left, and continue to push evenly down through both of your palms. Yeah, so the arms are straight and strong, and continue to firm the left thigh and lengthen the left side body, your left waist, as well as the right. Yep. Inhale. And as you exhale, let's step the right foot all the way through. Bring it to a wider stance. We'll set up for warrior one. So foot lands just behind where the right hand was. Spin your back heel to the earth and lift your torso up towards upright. Yeah. And then let's take a bend out of the front knee just for a moment and really feel into the connection of the back heel and the outer edge of your back foot. And I want you to keep that strong rooting through the back foot and now bring a bend back into your front leg, into that right knee. And so lower your right thigh down. Yeah, and find some lift and length out of your hips. So let the rib cage lift away from the hips. Let the fingers and the arms lift away from the shoulders. Let the shoulders descend down. Soften your face. Yeah, and then feel the stability of your legs, the balance holding your upper body up. Yeah, and we'll find a little bit of movement. Of course, you can change the movement if you're feeling wobbly. We'll start with an inhale. And then as you exhale, we'll lean the body forward towards your front thigh. Reach your arms back behind you. Inhale, we'll bring the arms up and over and lift the torso and the head back up. And exhale, lean forward, 
reach back. Stay balanced on your foot. Stay grounded through that back foot. Inhale, rise all the way back up. Twice more. Exhale, lean and reach back. And rise. Inhale. Good. We'll lean forward, reach back. This time we'll hold here. Yeah, and options. You can hold just where you are, or you can take that same movement, but just with the arms. So keep the torso where it is and move just the arms. So it'd be an inhale that reaches the upper arms alongside the ears, and the exhale that draws the hands back. Yeah, we'll spend about four breaths. If you want even simpler, the hands can come to the thighs. Or they can just stay resting and reaching towards the wall behind you. Good. Take your final breath with this movement or stillness. And then bring the hands to the earth. And we'll slide step the back foot forward a couple of inches for Two different options. One is pyramid, feet on the ground, both feet on the ground, forward folding over your right leg. Another option is standing splits, which is kind of the equivalent, but one leg is lifted. So in that case, the right foot will stay on the ground and the left foot will lift, left leg will lift. Yeah, so it's a little bit of a choose your own adventure, either pyramid pose or standing split, standing on the right foot. Uh, and just like you did in your half splits, ground through the base of the big toe and drag your right hip crease back. You can do this whether you're in your pyramid or your standing splits. And let the head be heavy, your jaw soft. And then we'll release and we'll all find our way back to our downward facing dog. So you can step back and travel through a vinyasa if you want, or you can step back and pause in your down dog. It can also be a cat cow that you take as your transition. Once you're there, no rush, left leg rises, breathe it up. Open your hip, bend into your knee, and pause for a couple breaths. Mara, I can only see your upper body, but I could see all those little adjustments. That was fantastic. Yeah, so the right leg is strong and drawing back. So the right waist lengthens as well as the left. And both hands and shoulders stay even. Yeah, we'll take a deep breath in. And then as you exhale, push the breath out as you step the left foot behind your left hand. And set yourself up for your warrior one. Left foot forward, right heel down. Face the hips to face the short end of the mat, the front. Yeah, and then do that same thing. Take the bend out of your front leg. Feel the connection of your back heel and the back outer edge of the foot. Keep that connection. Lower the front thigh back to the earth by bending your knee. Yeah. Yeah, and pause and breathe. And as soon as the mind leaves, come back to your breath, track your breath, feel your breath. And we'll take a big breath in. As you exhale, lean forward nice and slow, extend your hands back. Lift yourself back up, reach your fingers to the sky, inhale. And exhale, lean forward, stretch your arms back. Twice more, let the inhale pull you up. And then the exhale, bow yourself forward, bowing with control so it's not a collapse. Rise back up as you take a breath in. And exhale, lean forward, reach back. We'll pause this time. Same options as before. Maybe you stay here. Maybe you use your hands on your thigh for additional support. Or maybe you use the breath to move just the arms, reaching forward as an inhale. 
And then reaching back with an exhale. And we'll just spend four breaths. Not any of those variations, it doesn't matter what you choose, but commit to something and breathe with it. We'll take one last breath in this shape. And then exhale, release your hand, shorten your stance, right foot forward, straighten out both legs for pyramid pose. Or step on to the left foot, legs will still stay straight and reach the right foot up for standing splits. Yeah, and the poses are really, really similar. So you're both getting into the hamstrings. Standing splits adds a balance challenge and more strength building in the front leg. And a couple more breaths. Draw the left hip crease back. Ah, either shape, release your head, soften your neck. And then find your way back to your downward facing dog. Give yourself a couple of breaths. If you want to move through a vinyasa, take it. If you want to pause and rest, give yourself that opportunity and that option as well. And once you arrive back in your downward facing dog, take a deep full breath in through your nose. Open your mouth, exhale, sigh it out. Right leg rises, inhale. And as you exhale, step the right foot through and set ourselves up for warrior two this time. The right foot forward, back heel down, hips open to the side this time, arms reach open, arms reach forward and back. And then once we're upright, Lean your body forward a little bit, like you're reaching for something that's out in front of you, an amazing latte or something. And then do the opposite, reach back, let the whole spine reach back. Keep the legs static and steady, reach forward. Yeah, reach back. And then find the central resting place. So find that placement where you're not reaching too far forward or too far back, but where the head, Rest just over the chest, the chest sits right on top of the pelvis and spin your gaze to the right fingertips. And activate out through your hands, separate the webbing between your fingers. Imagine that you could push your palms down and then reach your fingers out. Uh, so each finger is reaching away from the shoulder. Lower the right thigh. Breathe. And then moving quite slowly, find the base of the big toe on your front foot, on that right foot. Connect that down into the earth and then straighten the right leg without over straightening it. So draw it towards straight, but don't lock it. And then we'll reach the body forward, reach the right hand forward. And lower the right hand down to your shin or to a block for your triangle pose. Left arm reaches up to the sky. <clears throat> yeah. And open your chest. Spin your chest to face towards the right. I'm sorry, towards the left. And lean both shoulder blades back. Imagine that there's like a glass wall behind you that's going to support you so you're not going to fall. Lean back. Yeah. All right, some of you will stay here for a longer triangle pose. Some of you might want to move into half moon. If you want to move into half moon, lower the left hand to your hip. Bend your front knee a little bit. Reach the right hand forward and step onto the right foot. Yeah, lift your left heel off the earth for your half moon. And so if you're coming into half moon, the hips stay open to face towards the left. Yep. If you're still in your triangle pose, notice if you hyperextended or over straighten that front leg. Invite that soft bend back in. Two more breaths wherever you are. And 
And then we'll all find our way back to warrior two. Step back or lift back up. Right knee stays bent. Uh, keep the bend in your right knee. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Reach the right hand up and stretch it back. And then exhale, let it go. Pivot the hands to the earth. Step your right foot and meet your left plank pose. And lower with your exhale halfway or all the way. Lift your chest, cobra or upward facing dog. And downward facing dog, exhale. Nice, last side of active poses, left leg rises, breathe it up. And then set yourself up, warrior two, step your left foot all the way through. Yeah, pivot the back heel down so the whole outer foot connects, lift yourself up. Yeah, warrior two, reach the hands forward and back. Do that a couple times, reach forward, reach back. And do this as an exploration. Yes, yeah, so you're doing it to explore what center feels like. And then rest in center, rest with that plumb line from your head to your heart to your pelvis, all in a straight line. Let the arms really, really reach out from the shoulders. Push the hands down without lowering the arms and spread out through your fingers. Mm -hmm. Take one more full breath here in your warrior two, Virvadrasana two. All right, and then in your mind's eye, find the base of the big toe in the front foot. Ground into that to straighten the left leg. And again, it's a straightening with control so you don't over straighten. Yeah, and then reach the left hand forward and reach the left hand down, right arm up for your triangle pose. <clears throat> so that same tugging of the hip crease back that we did in our half splits and in our pyramid. You can do that here too, and you'll get a little bit more out of it. So dragging the left hip crease back. Yeah, lean back, lean the shoulder blades back, open the chest. And then choose to stay here for an extra five breaths or choose to find your transition to balance on your left foot for half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. So if you're coming onto the foot, You'll step onto the foot and lift your right leg up. The right toes will face towards the sides. The hips stay open. Yeah. Either shape, the gaze can be anywhere. So you can look down at the earth. That'll be a little bit more stable. You can look off to the side with a neutral neck, or you can uh, complete the twist by looking up towards your right fingers. Nice, nice focus. Take one more breath in. And then return to your warrior two. Pull yourself up or step back. Yeah, reverse your warrior. Inhale, left arm up, right hand down. And release, palms to the earth. Yeah, find your flow or step right back to your downward facing dog, remembering your choices. You always have choices. And then from your downward facing dog, let's simply step the right foot forward to the outside of the right hand. Yeah, and then lower the back knee to the earth. And then we'll spin the right toes out to face the right a little bit more and walk the right hand onto that front thigh. We're going to bring the palm to the inner thigh and rotate the leg. So the inner thigh is moving out towards the left. Yep. And you can find some nice movement with the head or soften your ear towards your shoulder. And you can always stay here or you can add on by bending the back knee and reaching the right hand back to capture the ankle or the foot. Yeah.
And the other way is fine. You can always keep the hand on the thigh and get that same traction. And take two more breaths. Make sure that you're not holding or gripping in the neck. Find some release. And then we'll all release. Release the foot or your thigh. Plant the hand back down and step back to your downward facing dog. Step straight on back. Inhale. Second side, step your left foot forward, take a wider step, lower your back knee to the earth, spin the left toes towards the left, so you just open the toes a little bit, hand to thigh. Yeah, and make sure that you have enough room between your front foot and the grounded hand. So your right hand, you might walk the right hand a little bit wider just to allow for a little bit more rotation in the spine. If you want to bend the back knee and grab hold of the foot, you can go ahead and do that. Yeah, and everyone find some movement in the neck and head. Move the neck and head, move your jaw. If there's a sweet spot that you find with the head released and you wanna pause and take a couple breaths there, it's always an option. And then release, left hand back down. Step back to your downward facing dog. Let's lift the right leg up to the sky. Breathe it up. Yeah, and we'll slide the right shin forward for pigeon. So right shin forward, back knee and thigh on the earth, pointing the back toes back. Yeah, and you can always stay upright where you can fold the chest forward. And if this doesn't feel right, you can always come onto your back and take pigeon on the back, right ankle over the left thigh and left thigh moving in towards the chest. And so taking variations, taking alternatives, it's a way of honoring your body, of listening to your body, and recognizing what's working best for your body. And we'll just take another five rounds of breath. If you're on your back, squeeze your left thigh towards the chest and open the right knee and the right thigh away from you. And if you're forward facing, encourage your exhales to invite more release. So wherever you feel tightness in your body, focus the release in that part of your body. And then we'll slowly release. If you're on your back, stay on your back, squeeze your knees to your chest. If you're forward facing, walk the hands back in and push into the palms to lift yourself back to your down dog. And then everyone take a breath between sides. If you're on your back, you might find a little movement. If you're in down dog, you might bend the knees. And then we'll take the second side. If you're in down dog, stretch your left leg high, inhale, and left shin forward, exhale on your back, left ankle over the right thigh. Right, and take your time as you move into the shape. Hold forward if that feels good. Yeah, pigeon on the back, folks, right thigh to the chest, left knee opening away. We'll cultivate a calming breath with each exhale. Again, inviting some new opening, some new possibility of opening in your hips. It's also a new moon tomorrow, so the start of a new phase. And 
taking in two more breaths. And slowly release from the side knees to the chest or find your way back to your down dog. And if you're in your down dog, as you're ready, make your way onto your back. If you're already on your back, you can slide into your happy baby pose, separating your thighs. With options to keep the hands on the shins or options to face the soles of the feet towards the sky. And if you're coming onto your back, take your time to find your way into your happy baby. Yeah, and then do all the happy baby things. Move your body, maybe flutter your lips, move your head. And babies aren't symmetrical. Nothing looks the same or makes sense. Move your body intuitively. And then we'll draw the knees and the thighs back into the chest. Yeah, and take a breath in, lift your head and your shoulders, squeeze everything up, roll yourself into that tight ball and pause, hold the breath in. And on your own time, when you feel compelled to take your exhale, release the breath and release your body, stretch your legs long and your arms alongside you. Rest the head on the earth and close your eyes. And right away, drop into your rest. Drop into Shavasana, corpse pose. And with the body still, If you can let the breath just find its natural rhythm without needing to lengthen or control or direct it. And then invite the mind to be still as well. And it won't always, sometimes it'll want to wander, but continue to draw your awareness back the whole of you, to your whole body lying in the mat. Your whole body breathing in this shape. And your whole body relaxing. And as always, if you have longer, stay, relax for a bit longer. Yeah, and if you need to move on to the next thing, start to breathe into your body again, breathing a little bit more fully. And gently layer on movement of your fingers, your toes, your neck, your jaw. And 
And if you're ready, when you're ready, take your body into a full body stretch. Lengthen the arms up overhead. Reach for the wall behind you. Take the feet forward. Inhale, stretch your whole body long. And open your mouth, sigh it out. Exhale. And give yourself three or four breaths to find your way first to your side body curled up in a fetal position, and then all the way to your seat. So take each of those transitions slowly. Take it mindfully. Notice your body moving in space and the sensations of it. And if you're upright, keep your eyes closed, float your palms to touch. And just close with a shared breath. Inhale through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. And we bow to each other. Namaste. Mm-hmm.